Military analysts are always talking about the future of warfare and what the great next weapon will be. And that got me thinking of an old game called Fracture, a third person shooter that introduced terrain manipulating weapons. Then I started to wonder, how would this turn modern warfare on its head? To start, let's address the elephant in the room. To create a terrain altering weapon would require insane technological advancement and there would most likely be better uses of everything involved in manipulating the ground with how much it would cost in research, time, money and energy. But being able to manipulate terrain in this way opens up so many options for humanity. But for the sake of thinking outside the box, we're going to say that scientists discovered gelisium, which is the properties of being able to make terrain rise and lower almost instantaneously, when this odd mineral is focused into an energy beam. Yes, jelly bean science is very advanced before you ask. The weapons themselves wouldn't be something like a rifle or anything of that small caliber, most likely grenades, grenade launchers, recoilless rifles, missiles, rockets and larger caliber weapons that would be able to carry enough gelisium to get the desired effect to manipulate the terrain. Now whether a weapon rises or lowers the terrain would depend on how it's set and having the ability to choose would make any terrain manipulation weapons have far more battlefield capability. The size of the weapons could also range from man portable to vehicle mounted heavy weapons, even to ICBM mounted warheads, as with enough of the gelisium, the effects could be something even more dangerous than a nuclear weapon in terms of destructive capabilities, but without that nasty radiation. So how would these weapons be applied? Well at the ground level, where the frontline troops fight shoulder to shoulder and face their enemies within a few hundred meters, these terrain altering weapons would be man portable types, and would become fairly plentiful with them being a squad support weapon to be used in combat and for non-combat duties. Tasks like digging trenches or any type of moving of earth for fortifications would now be as simple as deploying a gelisium grenade or some kind of um, larger caliber weapon system to manipulate the terrain, either lowering it or raising it. And with this being instantaneous on use of the weapon, this means you're not just saving effort but also time. Imagine an engineer company who's been tasked with digging huge amounts of tank ditches, trenches and digging in various obstacles for a defensive situation. Well this could be done much quicker, but also with far less manpower used. A job that before required 100 soldiers might now only need maybe 10, maybe 20 with this terrain altering weapons. So it would allow forces to save huge amounts of resources when it comes to these duties, but also that manpower that's saved could be directed into other valuable frontline duties and realign tasks. So logistically, it could save, well, imagine an army of a million soldiers. Normally, I think about, is about 100,000 to 200,000 might be frontline kind of duties and the other 800,000 are support. Now we might be able to have more people on the front line with less people doing support roles in, well, with certain tasks. Not everything, but a large amount of staff or soldiers are used with, when things like defences are being dug. If you look at the Russia-Ukraine war, huge amounts of manpower is used when Russia built its defensive lines. With these kind of weapons, that could have been done far quicker. For the infantry forces, these terrain weapons would be highly effective in pretty much every environment. My first thoughts go to infantry who have to attack an enemy position, but it's over open ground. Well, now they could instantly raise or lower the earth to create cover. And with a skilled force, you could have troops with grenade launchers doing this as your men assault the enemy position. It would change how cover to cover tactics work, as now you can create the cover as you go. And if the enemy's in a trench with well, a well-placed grenade and bang, they're launched into the air as the trench floor now meets ground level. They're shocked, maybe even a little bit hurt, and most of all they're exposed to be shot and killed. And cover of all types could be shifted easily. It would make fortified locations now far weaker. Even though these weapons allow terrain to be manipulated for your own purposes, the enemy can also just revert it. They can actually change your plans for the land. It would make for a fast shifting and very dangerous battlefield. Urban environments wouldn't be immune as yes the buildings are stable, but their foundations and the ground around them would be susceptible to the terrain altering weapons. With enough of these weapons, especially more powerful variants from tanks, artillery and bombs, this could cause towns and cities to suddenly have their ground shifted, not only raising but also descending at the same time. These shifts would cause it to be an earthquake on steroids. It would turn the buildings and their contents into weapons, as they crumble and everything inside are hurled around. It would cause massive casualties to anyone inside and cripple the city's infrastructure. I can only imagine the damage would rival if not beat the most powerful recorded earthquakes and if the occupants of the city do withstand this assault, well they're left in absolute ruins. This would require the actual cities to be levelled and then the ground flattened for any chance to rebuild 
in a sense, we have weapons that can wipe you off the map because we now change the map. With enough Gelesium, we can create a canyon here or raise a mountain there. So if you feel safe in your bunker, well, you might right now, but all of a sudden, the earth starts to shift and your bunker ends up on a Mount Everest underneath your feet. It's crazy levels of power that should be reserved for the gods of men, but obviously, if you've seen Fracture the Game, these weapons do become available. And obviously, we're all thinking outside the box here, this is all sci-fi, but with the levels of kind of tech science is getting to, who knows, one day maybe these weapons do become reality. And the ability to take out heavily fortified targets that would normally require insane levels of ordnance, like bunkers built into mountains or supermassive dams, which even if struck with entire squadrons of bombers might still be standing. Well now with a large enough terrain manipulation bomb, you just need to hit near the target, and the shifting of the ground alone would collapse pretty much any structure I can think of. And it's nearly impossible to build things that are immune to this, because... If a structure like a dam that needs to hold up huge amounts of water or be able to contain it, it needs to be on strong foundations and be so strong that obviously the pressures don't break through it. And buildings like skyscrapers that are built with lightweight and flexible materials that can sway with the wind, some several feet, I think some actually even several meters, this could be very dangerous because even a small amount of terrain manipulation near the foundations could cause the entire thing to collapse. And this may lead to humanity downsizing its buildings as a whole. Like, think of massive engineering projects now. People might say, you know what? Let's not build a skyscraper. It's too vulnerable to even a small amount of terrain manipulation. Now we're just going to build, you know, three, four-story buildings max. You know, who knows what this would lead to? And obviously people will say, like, something like, let's say the Three Gorges Dam in China. There's always the joke of, you just hit it with a new... Well, it's a massive target if you've looked into it. Whereas something like a terrain manipulation device, you wouldn't need something as strong... And it's more focused in actually taking out the structure by manipulate, manipulating, should I say, the area around it so it collapses under its own weight. And also recently with the USA bombing the um, nuclear bunkers in Iran, obviously they were nuclear, oh, what's the term I'm looking for? For making um, fuel for a nuclear device or whatever they said they were, I can't remember the actual term, but um, they used bunker busters to collapse in the entrances to the bunker now from what i understand they haven't actually taken out the entire bunker complex they collapsed the entrances and made it impossible to get in or out but obviously supposedly they'd already moved out before that but the bunker itself is still fairly structurally viable you just have to take out the rubble or build a new way in which obviously isn't easy but a terrain manipulation device would literally cause the entire bunker to collapse and be destroyed so it is far more dangerous to fortifications like that and obviously some bunkers that are built literally under mountains, even a bunker buster can't get in. Some of these weapons have, I believe, 90 to 100 meters of penetration through solid kind of earth or rock. What happens if you build something under a mountain that's 300 to 400 meters thick? You would need something, either a nuke or something like a terrain manipulation weapon. That's all I'm thinking there. On an even larger scale, you could even manipulate the land to change entire areas so much the world itself is unrecognizable. Mountain ranges could be flattened. Marshes and bogs could be raised to cause the water to drain to lower lands and dry them out. Even the seabed could be raised, so this is basically terraforming territory, where the consequences would be massively unpredictable and most likely spell trouble for mankind as a whole. And this also opens up what happens on an area that's around the terrain you manipulate. For instance, if you raise the land or lower it, do earthquakes happen around it, or does this even have a knock on effect on things like the tectonic plates? I can't imagine exactly what happened, this is well beyond my knowledge, but I think the scientific community would be voicing their concerns pretty quickly. But obviously, if this weapon has civil or military application, a lot of the times science can be ignored or massaged, especially if funding money is given to scientists. As we know, they have an opinion, and then once you get funding money, that opinion changes very quickly. So, yeah, could be an interesting time. The benefit of terrain manipulation weapons for military battlefield engineering is huge as well. Things like creating a river crossing could be done instantaneously with the ground being raised so vehicles and troops can cross without being drowned. This would allow for rapid surprise crossings without the need for slow deployment of things like portable bridges or pontoons. Obviously the river flow would suddenly change which could cause issues but once the troops cross the ground you could then lower the terrain so the river flows normally again. This could be used in an offensive capacity with waterways being diverted to flood enemy positions and either divert water away from the enemy so that them and their civilian population no longer have access to fresh water, which could allow you to dehydrate an enemy nation into submission. It's pretty nasty, but would be highly effective. 
The terrain weapons being used to directly fling troops and vehicles into the sky by raising the ground instantaneously would cause designs to change. Heavy vehicles like main battle tanks and armoured personnel carriers are now a massive liability when you can instantly raise the ground and flip them over or knock them on the side, and the poor crews get the worst headaches of their life plus some broken bones, maybe even death in serious cases. Vehicles which are becoming increasingly vulnerable to anti-tank weapons and drones now have another fear. And then, then there's the danger of armoured assaults actually being cut off where these weapons could literally create anti-tank ditches or anti-vehicle kind of crossing ditches right behind or in front of them instantaneously. All of a sudden your armoured assault is trapped. Anti-tank teams, air and artillery support then pick you off at their leisure. It would cause a rethinking on how war is conducted. I don't know how these changes would affect our modern armies, you know, immediately, but maybe smaller, lighter, more air mobile forces might become the norm and armoured vehicles might become very limited in their use. We might see lighter, more kind of flexible vehicles that can handle very difficult terrain and maybe designed to be flung around a bit more. And maybe in time, things like mechs or walking drones could become the norm because the ground is no longer a stable element. It could be thrown about, you know, one day you're crossing a open terrain, the next day the enemy's turned it into a mountain range. It would cause chaos for the military for a while, but, you know, they always do adapt to the situation eventually. And long-range terrain manipulation weapons like something like a cruise missile or an ICBM with these kind of um, properties would change how logistics are conducted. Like right now, obviously, logistical chains for militaries are massive. I don't think there's ever been more rear-line troops to support front-line troops. I think it used to be something like 8 to 1. Now I think sometimes it's between 12 and 15 people in the rear to support one front-line troop. And obviously with logistics bases, you have supply depots, and these can vary from small places to massive you know, military camps or military supply depots. Well, these terrain altering weapons not only can like destroy a position like today, but they can literally destroy the entire base so it can't be used. So logistically now you're gonna have to have far smaller groups of logistical forces, smaller supply dumps, and maybe even more mobile amounts of supply. So trucks that are always ready to move supplies from one place to another quickly. So it's going to make supplying a long range kind of front line. Imagine, for instance, the US is fighting a war several thousand miles away. Yeah, you can deliver the supplies, but now you can't stockpile them in a supposedly safe base because all of a sudden the ground could raise or lower, that base could become inoperable, and all of a sudden you've got to move the supplies somewhere else. It's actually more dangerous than weapons that simply, you know, bomb a base and you think, oh, we've lost some supplies, but, you know, we still have a large amount of infrastructure here. The infrastructure gets completely wrecked, so. Logistically, it's going to be a nightmare as well for people who are getting hit by weapons with this effect. So, yeah, horrible for pretty much any modern military. And it could make some front lines become completely cut off. So, yeah, it's going to be absolute terror. Also, there's the potential for the kind of surprise terrain manipulation deployment of the weaponry. So imagine you've dug underground and you lay a large amount of these weapons ready for an enemy force coming. And all of a sudden, you manipulate the ground very deep under the actual you know what is the kind of ground level towards the surface level should we say would this cause i don't know what chaos this would cause massive earthquakes but would it just cause the entire ground to collapse into caverns could we see a mountain literally shoot up like we said earlier it would mean that attacking a position now with any one of these weapons is really a gamble because a huge amount of explosives can be dug under the ground but unless you're literally deploying something of you know a moab or a nuke level Deploying the weapon deep on the ground limits the, the damage because a large amount of the energy is obviously taken up by the earth. Well, in this case, the weapon itself manipulates the earth, so that is pretty terrifying. I'm not really sure what would happen, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a scary thought. I didn't really know where I was going to go with this video. I just I remember the game Fracture. I remember the terrain manipulation weapons. I thought it's worth a video. It's worth talking about. There's probably people out there with far better knowledge on things like this than me. Maybe you guys in the comments. I just kind of wanted to get the conversation started. So do tell me what you think. Tell me your ideas on it. And also, if anyone knows about any kind of technology, even just touching the edges of this, please do tell me. Because I've had a look around and I haven't really seen anything. But I'm sure there's a crazy scientist somewhere who's like trying to manipulate a gun that can manipulate the ground without just using a large explosion. Obviously, you can always deploy a, you know, a missile or an artillery shell to make a crater. But actual weapons that manipulate the earth or ground or rocks or anything like that. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found it interesting. It's been a kind of interesting one to do, kind of a random one. And as always, thanks for watching and have a beautiful evening.